714 on a beautiful Thursday morning. It's good to have Wes Henderson back at mic number two. How you been, sir? I've been doing great, Dale. Thanks for having me back. You bet. Well, things have changed. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> they have changed. It, uh, it's been a great change for me, and uh, and I hope it uh, winds up being a great change for Yellow Summit Schools as well. Uh, probably the most exciting time of my life, or at least in my working career, is getting to go over and uh, take over superintendent of such a a great school that uh that really just does a lot of things to help kids and that's that's you know you know me that's what i want to do sure uh, we've known each other probably 20 years or it's, better whether it's been on the baseball field or at football games or and then uh not too terribly long ago you were sitting over here talking about transportation when you were with mountain home and so you know things change things improve and so um uh, I'm going to ask you the same question. I've, when Asa Hutchinson sat right there and Mike Ross, everybody else, you had a genie in the bottle and you get three wishes. What would you wish for Yellow Summit Schools right now? I know sometimes uh, it, can be, it, it can be I a wish you to, I wish you to ask me that uh, 15 minutes ago. Let me think about it for a while. But that's <laughs> <laughs> but that's a, that's a good question. I mean, first of all, I mean, as you know, as, as I think most people success know. Success of the students? Well, number one, yes. Uh, you know, success of student for for our for our district for for all districts you know I just want kids to do well whether it's at Yellowville Summit or or any of the area schools, uh, you know as, as a district that's in fiscal distress you know I'd I'd like to see us uh, you know it's it's going to be a, a struggle for a while financially uh, our kids won't do without anything anything they need we're going to have for them but uh, but you know it's nice to be able to do those extra things where the yeah. kids see how much you appreciate them when the people that are working so hard for you uh see how much you appreciate all the hard work they're doing um but you know the, the kids success uh you know fin- financial success for the district and and uh and really i guess the the third wish would just be i i i'd hope that everyone in uh marion county in in uh any whether they're in Yelvil, Summit, any of the areas over there where they where we can get our story out, where we can truly paint the picture of what a great school Yelvil Summit is, and uh, and and how lucky our kids to be a part of it. I guess those would be my three wishes. On occasions, I will get a phone call from Mr. Bob Rechtenwald, and hey, you want to do stats for XL Seven? So I'll help out uh-huh. Gil and some of the guys at TV, and uh, take my computer and do stats for football. We did a couple of Yelvil Summit games. And good crowd, good support there. Uh, People love like a, them. Dale. It is so exciting to uh, the the whole atmosphere of of a smaller community uh, is is it's infectious, you know. Because yeah. because they now let me tell you when I got over there, they were angry at that school, you know, and there were a lot of people who were were most upset that they let themselves get in in financial situation that they were. But really, when you look at it, it, it wasn't that they were throwing money around wastefully. They were just trying to do more for their kids than than what than what they could afford. Excuse me, than, than what money was really there, and 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 it was all in uh, in personnel, you know. And and we just uh, the cuts that were made were were probably ninety five percent or more in in personnel. So so we just have a. And it's a very painful thing to go through that because mm-hmm. there were there were some people that were truly uh, loved uh, in that community that that uh, that are now working other places because of uh, you know because of the cuts that had to be made. But uh, but we're on the, we're on the upswing financially. Uh, you know, it'd be nice to have a magic wand and have it all over with just it'd in be nice one. To have the genie in the bottle. It, with exactly. Yeah. But but we don't. So we're gonna uh, fight through that. And but there is. Absolutely no doubt that um that within a couple of years we're gonna be back in the financial shape that we want to be in and um and like I say doing everything that that you can imagine for these kids what's a, do you see a difference? I know we're just talking twenty two twenty three miles difference between Mount Lum and Yellville. is there is that a different <clears throat> lifestyle? Than what um, what we're used to in Mountain because you know, we're, the, the we're a retirement area here, but you see a lot of uh, Dale. The difference that I see, and it's what I, I've told people as long as I've worked here uh, in this area, is that you know, at Mountain Home, you you've kind of got uh, you can kind of break Mountain Home into thirds. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a third of the third of the kids that go to Mountain Home schools are, are native mm-hmm. Baxter County kids, and about a 
a third of them are from the basically the Chicago area, you know, the upper Midwest. And then about a third of them are from kind of everywhere else, mm-hmm. Kansas City, California. So, so you don't have a real close, it's hard to have a real close knit community because you've got some very different, uh, different personalities, cultures di- in, yeah. exact different cultures. And so, uh, so the difference that, that I've seen so far, it seems more like that, that instead of broken into thirds, you know, over at Yellow Summit, it looks to me like we're going to be a lot closer to the, uh, that third that are originally from Baxter County and Mountain Home. Right. And, and not, not that all. We're going to have kids from all over. Just yesterday, I mean, just, just, I took calls forever in Mountain Home from, from grandparents saying that they'd like their grandkid to come live with them and they're from such, such. Well, yesterday I took one, uh, at Yelville. We're going to have a student move it to us from North Carolina to live with his grandparents in Marion County. And, uh, and so we are, uh, we're glad to have them and, and we're going to get, Lots more of them like that. I, I just hope that, you know, we want people to know that, that we'd love to have their kids at Yellow Summit schools, and we want to do everything we can to help them when they're there. What do you think about school choice? I think it's a great thing. I, I, I love, I think it's the only way to do schools. If, if a child, if Yellow Summit cannot meet a child's needs to where they are happy and want to get a good education there, I want them to go somewhere to where they get an education. My, my only beef with with it would be that i probably think it should last right now it has to be filed before may 1st i i really don't see any reason why it has to be done before may 1st i I would rather go right up till august 10th or something where where we could where it's easy for a kid to switch because i want kids at school they want to learn from but i also want the people of yellow summit to know that i'm going to do everything in the 24 hours each day that I have to make sure that Yellow Summit is the school that kids want to go to. Mm-hmm. We want it to be uh, an enjoyable place, a, a student-friendly place. But part of being student-friendly means they get the education that will put them in a position to do whatever they want to in their life. So now, you know, a lot of the responsibility is with the parents telling the kids that they're going to have to take the responsibility on their own. Now, I know the younger kids have to learn that, but when you start getting junior high and high school, you know, we have to, it, it's a communication thing starting at home. Look, you've got a math page, you've got to get done, you've got to have it done by tomorrow morning. The discipline, how do you relate that to some of the parents that really don't care. You know what I'm trying to say? Uh, no, I, I, I see exactly what you're saying, Dale. And I, and I, education works best when parents and the students take responsibility for it. Mm-hmm. But we live in a world where schools can no longer point fingers at other people right, because, right. because we've got to get it done, whether they're doing their job or not. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, you know, I'd love to have that magic wand and every child come to school saying, please teach me, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an open vessel, pour the, pour the knowledge into me. But it doesn't always work that way. So we've got to provide lessons. we got to provide help that, that those students are going to be successful whether they want it or not. And uh, But, but don't, don't hear me say anything, but the way that this world works best is when there's a mama and a daddy that are encouraging that child, admonishing that child. Uh, you can do this. Giving, giving them the self-discipline necessary yeah. to where to where we're not providing the discipline as a school, where it, they come to school ready to learn. And that is that is so much fun when, when kids come wanting to learn. And, and what you find is they have more fun, we have more fun, and, and, and the education process is actually – it's enjoyable, and just like you find people find in their in their lives, the harder that pe- harder you work at anything, the more fun you're going to have at it. True. So you know, and I've heard over the years that you know I've heard, well, you know, my kid can't do well in that classroom because that teacher's got it out for my son or my daughter. Give me a break. That's not true. No, you it's know, not. I mean, you can go to Harrison, Yellville, Cotter, Gasville, Mountain Home, Norfolk, any of these schools along north central arkansas and i guarantee there's not a teacher out there that's out after one particular student no and and that's that's not to say that there's never been a personality clash somewhere between two really good people that 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 we need to try to work through Mm -hmm. you know as as 
as a as a building principal in Mountain Home forever. You know, we dealt with that a lot of times. And we're we're great teachers, not good teachers, great teachers, and not good students, but great students. Maybe sometimes struggle to to g and haw together real good. And uh, but what you do is is as as, a, as an attitude. administrator, yes, you it's work attitude. together. And 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 when everybody takes the attitude that they want to treat other people the way they want to be treated. You know, it just goes right back to that. And and that's what I try to do and what I want our teachers doing is treating those students the way they would want their child treated, the way they would want to be treated, and great things happen. Mm-hmm. It It is – I I've had great success in dealing with people that way, and uh, it's kind of amazing how when you do what you're taught that, that like I say, that, that things work best. Mm-hmm. Now, I know when you were in Mountain Home, you had a great, when you were transportation director for the last couple of years in Mountain Home, your buses were just driving 2,200 miles a day from start to finish. What's the difference in your in how the territory is for Yellow Summit? You well, got a smaller Mount, territory. It's, it's a smaller, but not a lot. I mean, it's really not, not. Because you can deal with Highway Mount, 14. Mount, exactly. Uh, you know, years. Mountain Home's got, I believe it's right at about 360 square miles. Yelva, we're looking it's in the neighborhood of 250, maybe a little more, wow. maybe a little less. So, I mean, it, it's a, it's a, it goes north south most of, of Marion County, uh, not quite as wide as, as Mountain Homes District is. But you We go all the way up to Peel. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Go, wow. go way on down My south as well goodness. to Maumee. And so, so it is, there's, there's a lot of mileage there. We, you know, instead of having, so your weather conditions are, Bigger oh, factor here heavens, yeah. Highway 14, 235. Yes, yes. And, and when you're in a 125, when you're in a uh, district that is a uh, a smaller population, there probably will be uh, maybe not quite as. I, I understand that the county does a great job with the roads, you know, such mm-hmm. as that cleaning roads during um, uh, snow times. And you know what, the county judge, and that's another nice thing about you. Look at a small. I've already had a call from the county judge, Wes. If you if y'all find any roads that are uh, that are going to tear your buses up, you know, that are in bad shape, uh, you let me know, and we're going to get you some help with it. If it'll help with the schools, we want to do it. And, you know, I, I just couldn't help think that is just, yeah, it's teamwork. Matter of fact, I got a call yesterday from uh, the new sheriff over there, and, and, and she said, Wes, I want you to know that when, when uh, school gets started, you know, that we will have a police officer that come out, and as – if you're not aware of where Yellow Summit schools are, they uh, they pull out onto Highway 62, and some of the buses take a left to get down to Highway 14 where they go south. And uh, she said, "I'll have a uh, I'll have an officer there to stop traffic." You know, she said, "You just put all your buses through, together, yeah. let the buses go through." Because all I could think of is that is a uh, Right, you know, right, right, Methodist at, church right at, there at the I shopping. believe White Oak Station White Oak and Station, the yeah. Methodist Church is where where they'll pull in and and every day they'll come through stop traffic and and I thought what a great situation to uh because that's a that's an accident waiting to happen if you if you don't have some help like that and that's just that's what you find and and I'm because there's it's that way in Mountain Home as well Dale don't sure. hear me oh, no, yeah, but yeah. but when you're in a smaller area it's just great to see everybody pulling for you it's it's an exciting time sounds like you got a good bunch of people over there getting behind you it it, it we do i mean it, there, it is a they love their school uh and and i love it too it's it's just been a great start yeah wow we got about 45 seconds before we go to break uh quick thought before good news break um well, I want to say thank you to to everyone over there who Dale. It is you know with they have done so much to their facilities. Uh, they being maintenance, uh, they've worked so hard on our facilities trying to get them ready because you know we don't have a huge staff of our maintenance and custodial staff, but they have worked so hard painting, and I, I hope that the patrons of our school notice it. Uh, matter of fact, the last. Uh, we've had the prisoners from Calico come up three days or coming up for another day. That you talking about a thing of beauty, seeing those gentlemen work, and and That's I'm good. I'm so and then they are so I've always appreciative been with the campus. Well, really it, it's it's a beautiful campus, and uh and to get to get help getting it ready, uh, 
is just a blessing, and and I'm I'm very proud of of, of the efforts that have been made to improve the campus, and uh, so we're we're trying to be ready for for the start of school year. Visiting with Wes Henderson, superintendent of Yellow Summit Schools. Be right back. It's news time. Seven thirty-five on a beautiful Thursday morning. We're visiting with Wes Henderson, the superintendent of Yellow Summit Schools. Um, well, let's, let's open Pandora's box. Um, I've heard so much about Common Core. Now, I can tell you about the National League Central with St. Louis leading the Cubs and the Pirates, but I can't tell you anything about Common Core other than negative stuff that I've heard. What is Common Core and what's your feelings on this? And if you were in charge of some of this, what changes would you make? Because I don't know. You know, honestly, Dale, I mean, as you mentioned that, it's – it's it's not as huge of a change as people look at and, and want to say and and to me the whole the whole thought of 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 knowing that if my child had to move to Pennsylvania if my child had to move to Minnesota to know that that he would have had basically the same the same set of curriculum in Arkansas as he would get there so he would not be either so far ahead that he's bored to death or so far behind that he was in a hole I love that thought you know I, I'm like like so many you know I, I'm not a huge uh, big government fan so I mean I, I'm not uh, it, it makes me nervous when when people want to say that that this is a, a big push from from big government but but honestly, I don't think it's as I don't think it ever was as much of a push from that as what some people have made it out to be. I mean, I, I think it's something that a lot of educators have wanted. Well, haven't we had universal, not universal, but national standards before? Because I remember my elementary school years were in St. Clair County, Illinois, and every year we'd have that little test at the end of the season where we'd have to color in the little black dots or color in the dots with number two pencil. I think that was an and, Iowa test. And I, I think this is maybe just a little more structured than that. My, you know, really? would be would be my description of that. I, I don't, and, and I and I think there's there's a, a huge push for, you know, project based learning with it, which which is a which is which is a positive thing because <laughs> because we we look and and as a student, you know, I learned, hand me a worksheet, show me how to do something a couple of times, let me practice it, and I learned well that way. And I love, I, truth is, I always like school. But you know what? There are kids who don't learn that way. And, and I think we've got to be ready to meet the needs of all the students. And, and that's, you know, part of Common Core is, is being able to have more than one way to, to meet the needs of these kids. There's more and, than one way to skin a cat. Yes. And, and I don't, uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that, that, and number one, I'm not an expert on Common Core because, uh, you know, one of the things in talking with the folks at, at Yelp, you know, the last four years, my time was spent dealing with transportation issues and other, uh, I don't know, how would you say, as, as student services director, you know, a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of things I did in Mountain Home was just dealing when, when people <coughs> were not at their happiest moments with school. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, I wasn't as deeply involved in curriculum. And those are the years where Common Core has really been coming in. So, so I've been working to, to mm -hmm. get up to snuff with it. Um, but the but the basic premise, I'm, you're not going to find me saying I'm I'm majorly opposed opposed to any of it. Uh, you know, my only concern with any of it is I, is what other people say. And and I just don't see it. I see has it. As, it I, see, I, 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 see, it, I think it has been blown tremendously out of proportion. You know, people say that, that the locals are losing all control of their schools. That's just not what I'm seeing. I think I think if you'll ask uh, my wife and most teachers, they still are going to be able to teach the things that they feel are best for their kids. Right. And, and you know, are there some things to it that are going to make us all uh, change a little bit of what we do? Sure. But, you know, mm -hmm. bottom line is schools have changed. And, and if we don't see that, You're not saying I wanted to we're, talk we're, to you about is changes in education because I remember I started first grade in 1964, <clears throat> and we used to have this little 
little man that stood on the little desk. He's called the numbers man. And the teacher would put fingers in the hand, and that's how we would learn to count. Right. You know, and it was the mechanics. I'll never forget that little man. It was so much fun. Dale, can you go up and put five fingers on the man? You get these five, you get a whole handful of these metal popsicle stick looking things. Right. And they're like, one, two, three, you know. Look at the changes in education well, see, from 1964. And, and, that, and, and now we have kindergarten kids who basically are learning multiplication. Yeah. I sat in a class, uh, I can't remember if it was last year, year before last, where, where they were they were counting ants. You know, they, they said you've got to have, uh, you've got six groups of ants, I mean, six groups of ants that all have 10, 10 ants in them. And, and the kids, they would, some of them would draw logs or whatever and put the ants on a log and then count the ants up that way. But, but they, they, they were doing multiplication. And what you had, you got this whole, whole group of 20 kids in there. And of the 20 kids, probably 15 of them got it right. And you're talking about counting to five. And this was in, I forget, it was February, March. It wasn't at the very end of That's the year. Amazing. Kindergarten kids, basic, they, now they didn't know they were doing multiplication, but they were doing multiplication. And, and so it's just, it is, we, we, ex, our world has become so complex that, that kids are starting earlier and, and we, but not, and don't get me wrong. These are kids that had a smile on their face that were loving Eager it. Eager to learn. And, and so, you know, when I say that they're doing multiplication, I'm not saying that we're shoving it down their throat. They're smiling. They're having a big time. And so, uh, you know, that, that's just part of what I'm, and, and really, Dale, that's probably my biggest excitement of, of my new position is getting to be back <laughs> part of curriculum again. I really, as a principal, I didn't realize how much I liked it. I knew I liked test scores, you yeah, know, and, yeah. and everybody, you know, when, because, but, but I liked it because we were good. You know, the, the, when I was at the junior high and, and I'm sure as Ron's still there now doing great things, you know, our test scores were as good as any in the state of Arkansas. You bet. And, and, and as I say that, Yelvil Summit, you know, part of what I was saying about them painting their picture, they, they don't do a good enough job of tooting their horn in that they were the, Yellow Summit had the only school in the area, and it was one of only, I believe, six schools in the state of Arkansas to have a perfect score on the school report card. Okay? Ooh. The elementary school, not only did they get an A, they got a 300 out of 300. Okay? Which, which I believe there are only six buildings in the entire state. Well, you know, we should have been out on the street score street corner screaming that i mean that is that's not good news and so what i'm saying is if the kids are getting that great start that's going to carry over to the kids when they are in seventh and eighth grade mm -hmm. when they are in ninth and tenth grade if if you get that awesome foundation yeah school is so much more fun because you know study after study will show you if they don't get the reading by the time they get out of third grade then then it's real hard to get them caught up well, haven't you implemented some new technology in the Yellow Summit schools? What did I see well, in the paper the other day? Well, they they have done a great job before I got there, and I hope to continue. I mean, they there's there's a couple of Apple Labs. We've got uh, you know a lot of, of new. Wow. Well, then they really they they just they really Larry did a good job of 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 trying to push technology with them uh, and. You know, we we're part of the Classworks program, which has you know some really good help for kids. Probably the thing that I'm most proud of that that I see them doing it. And it's not so much technology, but uh, but there's a Susan Barton reading program, uh, and you know we're not the only school in the area that does it. But I'll, I'll say this: I'm really proud of how we do it at Yellow Summit because the 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 teachers get almost giddy when you talk to them about how much improvement some kids who were really really struggling readers and when they got some specific inter interventions then by the end of the year they were they were caught up to level perhaps even surpassed what their grade level reading should be and that is what it's i just get I, honestly i get goosebumps thinking yeah. about that i mean you, you dale you know how much i love a good <laughs> ball game yep. you know how much 
You've seen me get angry at football games. You've seen me get happy at football games or baseball games or basketball games. But you know what? What really gets me excited is hear about kids that at one point read below level, and now we've got them reading above at, at Yellow Summit schools. That is exciting. You know, that, wow. that's what we want to do is we want kids that, uh, we want kids to be successful. And, and cause if they can, if they can, it only makes sense. If they can read, they can figure out science. If yeah. they can read, they can learn social studies. If they can read, they can even figure out math with a little bit of help. But if we don't ever teach them to read, mm-hmm. they're going to struggle learning the rest of their life. That's true. And so kids amaze me. I mean, I go back when I was, we'll go back into the sixties. Uh, we had textbooks. If we watched what kids call now a video, it was on 16 millimeter film. You had to go down to the projector room, get the projector and get the screen, set everything up. Yeah. When I would come home, our television was so big and it only picked up three stations out of yeah. St. Louis, you know, and then if you wanted to hear music, you put records that, on the radio. A big TV with a small screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It weighed like 300 pounds. But now, you know, kids carry the iPhones. And there's so much there's so much information that you can access just on a telephone now. Well, Dale, one of the things I talked to the teachers about yesterday uh, was that the, you you can basically Google any yeah. lesson you want to learn, and you can find it taught well. You can find a lesson taught about just about anything on that computer. But you know what that computer can't do? It can't care about that kid. No. And and that's that's what we talked about is when when our kids, uh, when our kids don't do well, I want us to hurt. When we fail, I want us to mourn. When when we do great, that you know what that computer can't do, it can't celebrate. Mm-hmm. And and I want I want our teachers, I want our whole community to uh, like I say to celebrate with our kids when things are going good. Uh, I, I I want us to be sad when things don't go well. You know, because I want us to care, and that's what it can't do. And, and you know, and, and as we talk about different things, I mean, if if there's any of our uh, folks who live over in the Yellow Summit District listening this morning that, that, that homeschool your kids, I, I want to reach out to you. If there's ways we can serve your kids, let us know. I mean, we, we're looking for ways to help kids, and, and we're not in we're not in a battle against kids who homeschool or whatever. We're, we're not. No, we – we want to help kids and uh because our world is a really really tough place it is and uh and and i you know if i've got a mission in life it's to try and help that more with superintendent yellow summit schools wes henderson right after the break stick around be right back it's coming up on 751 on a beautiful august 13th the humidity has dropped well, let me rephrase that. The dew point has dropped. Have you ever seen a more humid July and August? It's been. I was working, doing some yard work about two weeks ago on a Saturday. We were somewhere around 92, 93 degrees with a humidity of 88 and a dew point of 77. <laughs> I thought, oh my goodness, no wonder I'm sweating. <laughs> well, as, so, as somebody that farms, I have uh, absolutely loved, and, and I hope it rains again tomorrow, uh, but having green grass for my cows to eat this time of year yes. is, is a really, really yes. special thing. You know, I commented about that, you know, being August, normally it's just brown as it could be. But this is this has been really nice. But Hey Dale, can I can I go back to something that you mentioned sure. about my three wishes of genie in a bottle? You bet. If if anybody from Yellow Summit Schools, the truth is any of the area schools, if there there is a bit of a genie in a bottle that is out there to help our schools and people don't realize it, but but free and reduced lunch forms, okay, when 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 the schools send those home, if a school gets above 70% free and reduced lunch kids in their district, then it tremendously helps the school's financial situation. And I know there are people out there who think the school's just trying to be nosy and find out my financial information, uh, but that... I promise you, we could care less how much money you make for how we're going to educate your child. But for the last several years, Yelville has been right around 68, 69%. Well, if they would have had, if they'd have had 15, 20 more kids qualify as free introduced lunch, and I promise you, there's that many more that just didn't fill out the paperwork. 
okay? But if they qualify as free and reduced lunch and Yellow Summit is at 70%, it would have meant about $275,000 a year more that the district would be getting. And that is not a dime of local tax money that is going to that. That is money that, that if, if we don't fill out the forms and get it done, then that money is going to New York, that money is going to Chicago, that money is going to California. And I'm not saying those kids don't need it too, but I'm here to tell you our local schools need it. And, and I'm, I'm talking to Yellville Summit schools, but I'm talking to mm-hmm. Flippin', I'm talking to Cotter, I'm talking to Norfolk, I'm talking to Mountain Home. Please fill out those forms. And, and I'm, I'm begging you, Yellville Summit folks, if you're listening, encourage people to fill those out so if we can get help with that, then we want to qualify. Mm-hmm. And but I'm saying it's a genie in a bottle. That's that's money doesn't cost us our local taxes. Well, you're already paying the taxes. It's just a matter of can we get the money back if we've got people who are in need. Plus, your child gets free or reduced lunches at school too. Boy, that helps. That helps exactly. Oh, final two minutes. Wow, do you enjoy the drive every morning? Actually, I do. I mean, it's, nice? it's from it's twenty five minutes from my house to there. And I, I used to think when I first got out of college, I lived in Dallas for a year, and I, I I lived eight miles from the building downtown that I worked in, and it was never shorter than forty five minutes. And this is, you know, like I say, and now you can enjoy the every day. It, it is it is a beautiful drive every day. I'm cautious to uh, make sure I go the speed limit through Gaspel and Cotter every day. Uh, and just uh, just have a nice, relaxing drive on the way over there on the way home. Mm-hmm. But there's just a lot of good things going. Uh, I would like to encourage everybody, uh, as Brent Boje is uh, taking my position in Mountain Home, uh, take it easy on him because that first day it is really tough to get uh, 2,500 kids all to the right spot. I mean, four thousand in the entire How district, like but twenty five on buses. Two old one south. That's that's right. So <laughs> so be kind to him. I, he's a he's a wonderful man, and uh, he and Janelle Lorana and the mechanics over there and the drivers, uh, good folks. Please uh, be patient with them because uh, they're going to take good care of your kids. Let's work together on Highway 201 South in front of that's, Pinks, and that's 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 going to be a nightmare for a while. So that's uh, right. Bear with us all. Final 30 seconds. Uh, I I just uh, want to once again uh, thank the folks of Yeovil and Summit for for welcoming me into their family over there. Uh, we a uh, great group of teachers, uh, yep. great group of workers, and uh and and I'm really, uh. You know, from being around me today, you know how much I enjoy working with the kids. Yep. Uh, I'm I'm very excited about having a a situation where I ought to be able to. I'm hope to know every single child before very yeah, long, good. and uh, I'm going to expect great things from them. Been visiting with Wes Henderson, the superintendent of Yellow Summit Schools, and we look forward at Mountain Talk to working with that school district as well. That wraps it up. We'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody.